Hello everyone, welcome to FOC class 11. This video is part 9 of Java for class 11 IT code 802. First of all, let us have a look on the contents that we are going to study today. We will be covering the topics attaching code to a form component, executing a file and changing properties of components. These three topics we are going to cover in today's video. Let us start with our first topic, attaching code to a form component. First of all, let us recall what we had studied in our previous video. In our previous video, we had studied how to create a new project, how to create a new form and how to add a button. So all these three things we have studied in our previous video. We are proceeding with further steps and the next step is to write a code to exit from the application on the click of this button. As we know that whenever we click on the button, then some event is associated with it. Means whenever we are going to click the button, then some task is given to the button and it will happen after we click on the button. So, how does it happen? We basically give the code. So, here what type of code we need to give? We need to give a type of code which will give exit from the application on the click of the button. So, how will we do it? Let us see. For this, you have to double click on the button to attach a code with the event that is click of the button. Code, event, properties, we have discussed all these terms in our previous video. If you are confused with any of them, you can refer to them. We are proceeding with this. We have to attach a code with the event. And what is the event here? Here the event is click of the button. Means we have to associate the code with the click of the button. And why do we have to double click? Because not only in button, but whether it be any component. Double clicking on the component opens up the source window and places the cursor on the point where code is to be added. So, whichever component you have selected, if you want that you should add the code for it. So, what will you do? You will double click on that component and it will open up the source window and also for your sake of convenience, it will also place the cursor on the point where code is to be added. Means you do not have to find in the whole code that where the coding is to be done because the cursor is already placed where you have to do the coding. So this makes it easy for you to add the code. Now here is a note given, certain code is pre-generated and cannot be changed. Let us see how. First of all, what we had to do? We had to double click on the button. So, when we double click on the button, so here is the code that is generated after we have double clicked on the button. We are taken to the source window and in the source window, all the code is written here. You can see that this code is already generated and we have not written it. And also, in this code, a few coding is like which we can edit, which we can delete or which we can edit. But there is a few part of coding which we cannot edit and it is the generated code. We cannot edit this code and if we do then certainly it will give some error. Here you can see it is right generated code. So it is basically the code that we should not edit and uh, it does not allow us to edit and if in case we edit it then some error may occur. So as I told you we will be displayed with the cursor. So basically the cursor was displayed here and we have already written our coding system.exit and then bracket 0. Uh, this was our coding that we had to write and I have already written it in the place where we had to write it. In the source window, 
at the single code line system dot exit zero. So we have already added this code line, and what will it do? We will see it when we will click the source button. The application Java source code in the editor is displayed with section of code that are automatically generated by the NetBeans builder, indicated by gray or blue areas called guarded blocks. Guarded blocks are protected areas that are not editable in source view. So as I just told you that there is some specific code which we cannot edit. Similarly here, what is that code? Basically that code is indicated by the guarded blocks. As its name is suggesting, it is guarding something, means it is protecting something. So basically it is displaying the text that is not editable. We can only edit code appearing in the white areas of the editor when in source view. So here you can see that few part is in the blue color and few part is in the white color. So the white area is the area where you can edit the coding and the blue area is the part where the coding cannot be edited. And if in case you try to do so, then error may be shown. So, this was the example of guarded blocks. Now, let us proceed to our next topic executing a file. So, to execute the application, simply select run, run file, or press shift plus F6. As we have already run many files in the previous examples also, you already know how to run a file. You just have to go to the taskbar or the menu bar. From the menu bar, you have to select the run option. Then you have to click on run file. Also, there is a shortcut key which is shift plus F6. By any of these methods, you can run the file. When you have run the file, you will be displayed with such a result. Now, what you have to do to observe the result, you have to click on this button. Now, as soon as we click on the button, the application ends and we return back to the NetBeans design window. So, what do you notice after clicking on the button? When you have clicked on that button, the application ends and you will get returned back to the code editor window. Also, you can see here that the output window is also being displayed and it is written build successful. That means the output is normal. There is no problem or there is no error while giving you the output. It was because we had used the command system.exit. Basically, this command is used to terminate the application to end the application. So whenever we are using this command system.exit in our coding, then what will happen? The application will terminate. This is the main major role of this statement. So because we had used this statement in our coding, so when we have clicked on the button, the application has terminated. The window in which we have designed our form is called the design window. We have already discussed in our introductory videos that there are two views. First is source view and second is design view. In the source view, what do we do? We do the coding. And in the design view, what do we do? We do the designing of our form. Means we have to design the form in the design view. So these are the two view or the two windows and whenever you want to switch between them then you can simply click on the specific tab here we have selected the source tab so the coding is being displayed here now let us proceed to our last topic changing properties of components Each component of our application including the form has certain attributes associated with it. What does it mean? Basically attributes means properties. So whichever component we are going to add in our form and the form also. 
they all have certain properties or you can say attributes associated with them and where are they displayed they are displayed in the properties window the properties window displays the names and values of the attributes of the currently selected component whichever component you have selected whether it be text field label or button whichever component is it it will display the property window will display the names and value of the properties of that component we can edit the values of most properties in the properties window means most of the properties are editable we can edit their values now we are taking an example of how to change the properties of components we are taking the example of changing the text displayed on the button so let us see how can we do that there are four ways of doing the same in the design view let us discuss the first way first of all you have to select the button component by clicking on it you will click on the button then you can see in the properties window that the properties of j button will be displayed you have to locate the text property and then you will click on the text that is being displayed after the text property you will click here and you will type the text what we have to type here we are typing stop now let us discuss about the second method in the second method first of all you will select the object after selecting the object you will left click on it and when you left click you will see that the text is highlighted after highlighted text you have to change the text you will simply type the text which you want to be displayed here we want to display stop so you will type stop and then you have to press enter also please keep in mind that this step selecting the object and then left clicking on the button this step is different from double clicking the object because if you double click on it it will take you to the source code and here we want to change the text displayed on the button so here you have to follow this step and not the double click step now let us discuss about the third method in the third method also first of all you will select the object after it you have to press the f2 key when you will press it you will see that the text is highlighted and you can simply edit it after editing you can press enter now the fourth method is you can click right click on the button component and select edit text from the drop down menu here you will right click on the button then a drop down menu will be displayed and you will select the edit text option after this you can simply type the new text and press enter using the properties window it is also possible to change the font and foreground property of the button as we have discussed that some of the properties are editable so font and foreground property are some of those properties so we can edit them let us see what is their use font property is used to change the text writing style as we are familiar with font we also use in other computer softwares font so it is used to change the text writing style what is foreground property it is used to change the text color means we change the text color using the foreground property and what is text property it is used to change the display text so in our previous example we have changed the text property and here you can see we have changed it we have changed its value basically to stop so when we will execute the file we will see that the name or the display text has been changed and you can see here when we have executed the file we are being displayed the name of the button as stop so when we are going to click on it it will terminate the application 
so the text which is being displayed on the button it is now an appropriate text as it is indicating that what actually the button is going to do thank you that was all for today i hope this video was helpful for you we'll meet you soon in the next video if you have any doubts please comment in the comment box or message us on telegram app bye bye